Hello mate and welcome back to Let's Code Season 6. This is the finale. We've come a long way, ladies and gentlemen. We have gone from the very concept of our game development document and we've implemented all the elements of the game development document. I have been referring to it all the way through. Obviously not been showing that so much in the videos, but you can rest assured that I have been. But we've now created a dungeon crawler engine in which we have the ability to create game objects, which we can place in the rooms using our prefabs and we can either pick them up or use them from our inventory and we can drop them and we've also got the ability to create entities which can be NPCs, they can be enemies, they can be uh, pieces of landscape that obstruct the way, they can be signposts that tell us where we need to go, they can be chests that spawn game objects. The list of possibilities is endless, all it requires is you to use a little bit of imagination. And obviously, using these elements, we can basically build an entire game just around those two things. In fact, almost every game in the world has pretty much those two things. It has game objects and entities which behave slightly differently, but both enable us to make a game and tell a narrative more importantly. We've also got the ability to display events that happen in the game in our log, and we've got the ability to display text as dialogue in the center of the screen and we've got the ability to move around and build a map so you know we've got a really really well fleshed out game engine here the only thing that we're missing at this point is the ability to die <laughs> we've got all these mechanisms in place we've got our food and hunger that decrease steadily as we go through and uh, when we get to zero food our hit points start to reduce but once we get to zero hit points at the moment nothing happens it just keeps de decreasing into the negative numbers so the last bit the very last bit of code that we're going to talk about today is how we actually implement that and it is unsurprisingly incredibly easy because we've already done all of the groundwork now the simplest way to achieve this is actually going to be to use our user interface all the other game elements don't really update very frequently unless we hit the next button which is obviously something that you can change you can implement some kind of turns system in your version of the game but the user interface is actually updated every 0.1 seconds if you remember from using the timer in the main UI so what we're going to actually do is in the main UI we're going to check the player's hit points variable and if the player's hit points variable becomes less than or equal to zero, we're going to return from our screens the word dead. If you remember way, way, way back at the very beginning when we started programming this, we actually use the call screen method to define a variable called UI return. That's how we display the user interface on the screen in the first place. So all we have to do is within our game loop, is checked but if the variable that is returned from the UI return call is the word dead then we will do something and because our game loop is literally just a loop that's waiting for us to return something it will immediately quit the game if we return from that loop and that's all we have to do so in our user interface we're checking to see if the player's hit points drop to below zero or zero itself and if it does, then our user interface will return back to the game loop with the word dead. And if the user interface variable does return the word dead, then our game loop will simply quit out and the player will have to start again. Now, obviously, in this if statement, you can add whatever code you want. You can add a whole bunch of animations, a bunch of sound, a message that appears on the screen before it quits out. But ultimately, that's all we have to do to end the game once the player has run out of hit points. You can even implement a life system where as well as having a hit point variable you can also have a number of lives so they get x amount of attempts at retrying if they do manage to screw up you can even have the player respawn just teleport back to the start room the spawn room with full hit points and an empty inventory again and just start all over again if you want to the choices again the, li the list of possibilities is endless you now have the skills to achieve all of these things you just have to do a little bit of imagination and thinking outside the box in order to get you to where you need to be okay so a little bit of a challenge for you from me now is to see what you can do with this game engine bear in mind that in terms of the game development process we are only a very small fraction of the way through because what will inevitably happen is 
you as a coder will have to write a game engine. The game designers will then have to use that game engine to actually build a game. That also includes creating our assets, uh, play testing, and all that good stuff as well. So as far as this video series is concerned, this is the end. But as far as your game development journey is concerned, this is very much still the beginning. I wish you the best of luck. I look forward to seeing what you accomplish with this game engine, and I will see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye. <laughs>